On my timeline I'm having two stock footages which are recorded by a drone and I want to connect both of them with some smooth transition. Firstly, I'm highlighting both of them, right click and selecting new compound clip. Select your name and click on create. Now you need to go on the point where you want this transition to happen. I'm using this part here. Next I'm going to effects library and I'm looking for camera shake. Then you can simply drag and drop over your new compound clip and you're having a camera shake effect on it. While your compound clip is highlighted, you can go to effects in the inspector and set the keyframes on the motion scale and speed scale. In my case, I'm increasing their values by a tiny bit. Then go in the beginning of this compound clip and select a new keyframe for motion scale and speed scale, but this time make them values of zero. Then go back to your second keyframe and then move a few frames forward. Then go back to the inspector and reduce the values of motion scale and speed scale back to zero. And you're having this effect. A nice and quick smooth camera shake transition. On my timeline I'm having a stock footage on which I want to add a promist. So firstly I'm going into the color tab. Here in the color tab make sure that the promist panel is open by clicking these two icons. Increase the scaling values to about half. Next you can reduce the radius all the way to zero and I will also set the value of mix to around 20, 21. Now I'm going to preview it so you can see with and without the promised. Another way of making the Pro Mist, if you're having darker footage and you want to make it in the edit tab, make a duplicate of your clip. On Composive mode select screen. This is gonna turn your darker footage into a lighter one, make it more brighter. Now while still your second clip is highlighted, you can go to effects library and type in the search bar blur. And in the blur section you will need Gaussian blur, so you can drag it and drop it over your second video footage. Then while still highlighted, go to the effects and you can increase the amount of blur strength on horizontal. I'm gonna leave mine on about 0.700. Then I'm gonna deselect this box right here, so I can set up different values for vertical strength and I will reduce it to zero. And this is the final result. On my timeline I'm having to stock footages which I want to add some nice smooth transition in between them. So I'm placing my playhead in the beginning of the second one and then I'm cutting the first one there. And on the second part of my cutted clip I'm selecting Ctrl R so I can open Retime and Scaling. And I'm changing the speed of it to about 400%. Then I'm highlighting the second part of the clip and I'm going to the Fusion. I'm opening the search tool in the effects and I'm typing Drip. I'm selecting it and it's automatically merged to Media 1. While Drip is highlighted I'm going to Shape and I'm selecting Random. Then we need to correct a few of the settings, I'm starting with setting a keyframe on the amplitude of 0. Remember that your playhead must be in the beginning of that clip, then I'm going in the end of that clip. In here you can see the start and the end point of that, so like I said I'm going in the end of it and I'm changing the amplitude values, but this time I'm gonna leave it on 1. And that way the drip is gonna create some kind of dissolve ripple effect. As I'm going through the video you can see that I'm having some kind of particles dissolving, which are looking pretty nice. So after adding these two keyframes, we are ready back to go in the edit tab. You can preview it here once again to see what you're having. Then you can highlight this second part of the clip that we have just worked with. And in the search box you can type HSL Keyer. Then you can double click on it so it can be applied on your second clip. And while it is still highlighted, you can go to Inspector, Effects. But before that, make sure you select it Open Effects Overlay. On default you should be having this qualifier selector, so you can click on the screen and everything will be removed beside the part which you are clicking on. And now you're having just this particle dissolving. Now I'm gonna preview it so you can see what we're having so far. It's nice dissolving transition by using the drip effect. And what you can do to further improve it is while this clip is still highlighted, you can go to inspector in the transform, you can create the keyframes on the zoom values, create a keyframe with the default settings in the beginning of that clip, and then go further where your drip effect is also having a keyframe, and you can further increase the size of the zoom, also the position of your liking, that way you're gonna make it more visible, and it's not gonna be steady, it's gonna be more better looking. Also just a tiny bit I'm taking the length of that clip, I'm adding also a tiny bit of fading in the end. Also I'm selecting the spline icon, I'm highlighting the keyframe and I'm curving it so that it can be even more smoother. And also in between the two clips on video slot number 2 I'm right clicking and I'm adding 6 frames of cross dissolve and this is the final result. On my timeline I'm having a dance video and I want to add some kind of tracker. To make the video look more engaging, I'm going to the Fusion tab and in the search box I'm looking for a tracker. 
I am selecting it and it's automatically connected to Media 1. While the tracker is highlighted, go to the inspector and select the Operation tab. And you wanna set it up to match and move. When you did that, a window will appear on your footage and you can grab it and leave it in the middle of his face because we want to track it. After you readjust the window, making sure it's on the correct place, you can come in the tracker and track forward by pressing this icon right here. After it's finished, you can go to Operation and on Merge you want to select BG only. Now I'm gonna make a quick preview so you can see what we're having until this point. You can see that the tracker is tracking his head, but the whole footage is going out of frame and we need to fix that now. So while the tracker is still highlighted, I'm adding a transform from the FX library. And while the transform is still highlighted, I'm increasing the values of size, as well as the values of pivot until everything is matching our resolution. And this is the final result. And if you like this video, make sure you watch this one as well. I'm showing also some other effects in the Resolve. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.